Well, do you know how cold it gets in Iceland? Well, not as bad as some parts of Midwest, but do you know how to throw in cold weather? Well, Thelma does, and she's going to talk to us about that in our latest UBA Throws podcast, along with the tips on how to throw in the cold weather, which luckily we don't need here at UVA. Thelma is going to talk to us about her being a student athlete, international student athlete, and her experience in America and many more things. And you know pretty well by now our queen of Iceland, but if you want to learn more in our latest interview, she's going to talk to us about a whole life experience. So check it out on our podcast, Thelma Lynn Christian Zotter. All right, so we have Thelma Lynn Christian Zotter with us here. Thelma, thank you so much for your time. Thelma, like we said, is a senior here, and she's going to talk to us about all everything, about track, about sports, about Iceland, about being a student. We have a lot of questions from audience. We're going to try to get through all, most of them. Some were your friends. They were really, um, really funny. <laughs> uh, and a lot of fans have some very good questions. So okay. uh, but let's start with one of the questions. Last names in Iceland. Does everybody have daughter in their last name? How, how does that work? So all the girls have daughter in, the, in their last name. So it's basically daughter and the guys have son. And it works like that, that your father's first name and then daughter, like my name is Christian's daughter. My dad's name is Christian. So I'm Christian's daughter. And my brother last name is Christian's son. Mm. So yeah, everybody has like very similar last name. Like it always ends with daughter or son. Yeah. What about middle names? <laughs> how do you, how do you work that out? So um, that's just completely up to you. Like there's no, there's no rules with middle name. Like my li- middle name is Lind, which mm. basically doesn't mean anything. Okay. I think my parents just thought it looked good or something. Okay. But yeah, there, there's no rules with middle names or first names, just the last name. Okay. So last names are not not very common, uh, like Smith or Johnson. Oh no, no. Like we don't get we don't take the spouse's last name when we get married. Like mm. like here in America yeah. they do it, but back home we just keep our full name. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, back home we keep our full name. So yeah, that's, awesome. that's a different. <laughs> That's that's different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so obviously you're born and raised in Iceland. Um, how did you get into the track in the first place over there? So that's actually a very funny story. I was always in handball and soccer, like both. So and it was one time in elementary school, there was this track competition that all elementary schools in the city would compete at, I think it was sprint, long jump, shot put and high jump. I, I think it was those four. And all all the kids in the elementary school competed. And I did. And I thought it was super fun to like just jump and sprint. I didn't know I, I didn't know any technique or anything. Yeah. But just go. And then it was a little bit later, my mom got a call from a t- track coach. Okay. in Iceland and he really wanted me to come and try it out and he told my mom that there is this competition in Finland in a few months and yeah. if I would come try a track I could get a free trip to Finland to compete and I obviously love traveling I was like of course I'll try it out and get a free trip at least yeah. and I went to practice and yeah I just went to Finland competed there which actually went pretty well compared mm. I always I only was in track for a few months mm. and I just kept going yeah okay. so <laughs> how old were you when you started track and then how old were you when you started discus so it was in 2010 that I started track mm. which is I could not do that. and then how long before you started discus and I started discus in 2015 Okay, so it took you a while to figure out that you. Yeah, uh, I was. I was first. In this case, yeah, <laughs> I was only in. I did all the events first. I did, basically, like eight hundred meters. I did shot put. I did long jump trip. Like all of them, mm-hmm. and then it was in two thousand fifteen. My coach asked me. I, I was mainly a triple jump then. He asked me, if I could, if I, if I thought I'd be able to improve by I think it was 30 or 40 centimeters or 30 centimeters in triple jump Mm. or improved by eight meters in discus to to qualify for the world championship. 
Mm. And I, I had to make a decision with which I want to yeah. do. So I thought thought, thought to myself like, um, I think I'll choose this choose discus, mm. and I chose it, and I was able to improve by eight meters, and I qualified barely. I threw forty eight. Point six, mm-hmm. like point oh six. So it's like six centimeters over the nice. qualification. But that's why I chose discus. <laughs> oh, well, where was the the championships? In Poland, Bitsko- okay. Bitsko-sk. Bitsko-sk. Yeah, okay. Okay. in Poland. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So and then, yeah, you're uh, obviously worked hard, and you are uh, Icelandic discus record holder as well, right? National uh, record holder. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what are some things in this case uh, that you it took a long time or the, what a part of this throw took you the longest to learn? Uh, and what's one thing that you're still working on was one of the questions. Um, so the thing that I'm still working on and has taken me the longest is probably be narrow in the end because I'm always still very wide and I throw like a javelin. But um it's still taking me i'm I'm still trying (laughs) your dream event you don't want to give up on it i keep saying no but tell me like no i want to throw a gel in coach (laughs) but i feel like i think that's the that part that's taking me the longest and also stay grounded not jump like just keep the feet grounded and um hmm, what's the other thing i feel like with the flight, I got that pretty early when I started throwing, like the flight of the disc. And but if I look at the throws when I was started, it was mostly just jump and jump. Like it was no rhythm. It didn't like I'm so surprised how I threw 48 meters that young with that technique. But I think I was I did it pretty fast, so I was able to do it. But the technique, yeah, the technique is very difficult in discus. So it's I'm still working on it still. So yeah. <laughs> And it changes, yeah, changes uh, the thing that you have to work on, changes with you getting stronger and working on other things. Uh, what you did really well and your coach uh, thought you really well, which helps a lot, is the, the release, like you said, the release and orbit. That's one thing that people struggle a lot. They don't learn well, and you have that nailed down, and your coach uh, did a great job of teaching you that. So uh, luckily, we don't ha- you don't have a problem with that, which is one of the biggest things, right? So now it's... Yeah some other things that you have to work on yeah um, but that's one thing that you do really really do well what will be advice if somebody let's say they have a similar route as you did they're doing some other sports and they want to try discus what will be one thing that you would uh, give them advice be patient yeah. very patient because it's not gonna come just overnight it's gonna take a lot of throws you have to throw like there's no specific number of throws, but it's almost every day and just keep throwing and throwing. It's like repetition, do it all over again. Like it's mostly probably gonna be like bad throws, but but you have to throw a bad throw to throw a good throw. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> have some bad to compare to, right? Yeah, exactly. Just be patient and it will come in maybe a few years, but just keep going, not quit. Yeah, that part is not encouraging. It may be a few years, but <laughs> yeah. but it's true. Right? Really and in what's few years, you know, compared to how, how good you're going to be and how long you're going to throw, right? So yeah, first exactly. couple of years, yeah, the patience, that's a great advice. Uh, people rush mm-hmm. through things, basics, yeah. to learn them. And then when they learn them wrong, it's so hard to fix. So yeah, mm-hmm. good advice, good advice. Yeah. How, <laughs> how difficult was... So you talk about patience in throwing, and then you are throwing in Iceland this whole time, right? How hard was that, you know, in the Oof. weather and everything? It was, yeah, it was a lot of days that there was just snowing and raining and still trying to throw outside. It's like very cold, like you can't even feel your fingers, but you're still trying to throw discus. And that really doesn't, it's not a good comparison. You can't feel anything that you're doing and you still get mad at yourself that you didn't throw a good, even though like you can't feel. So basically back home when I was throwing, we threw in almost in all conditions, even though it was like snow and we'll just like take the snow out of the ring and like go. And I usually have like a glove on my left one, but not my right ones. Cause otherwise it was just get so cold. 
and you, I would wear like three sweaters, two pants, just like I just barely could move, but still trying to throw. Mm. <laughs> and also, there's a lot of wind, so most practices that you couldn't see a flight. I mean, it would just like go and straight down and all that. Mm. And um, but we also have indoor facility, but it's mainly just throwing in a net. So it's then you can mostly focus on technique, not on the flight, but. I like more, like, I like to throw outside more. So we did that most often, but it's it's very difficult. And then com- coming here, like, the weather is way better. So I feel like, yeah, I can improve more here and have better practices. How uh, how far were your, what was your, in that weather, what was your well, warm-up routine? Uh, so How was yeah. your day back so, home? You going to high school? When would you train? Hey, oh okay yeah so uh, we would always practice in like at four o'clock and next to our track or our throwing field it's like an indoor gym it's mm-hmm. like um for everybody like a public gym and we had a free access to there so we'd go in there warm up because you couldn't really warm up outside it wouldn't get warm so we went in there warmed up and then when you're warmed up you came outside and just start throwing right away or freezing <laughs> yeah just you, you got cold right away like if you got if you sweat it while warming up like that yeah you would get cold right away so if it was if it was too cold i assume you would stay inside uh, yeah ways. yeah but it doesn't get as it doesn't get freezing freezing as it does in some parts of iceland in uh, where you're from right in Reykjavik, Reykjavik? Mm-hmm. yeah it gets colder in the north but even though it doesn't get like freezing it's still a lot of wind would make oh, yeah. it a little yeah. colder because yeah. of the wind, the wind so, gusts, yeah, yeah yeah so it o- always feels cold for yeah. me i feel like <laughs> you don't get used to it huh? um, no you never get used to it <laughs> but it makes you tough obviously you know, obviously you yeah. and uh, goonie your teammate um also national record holder right mm-hmm. uh, you guys very successful disc throws over there uh you get i guess you get a good work out of it right what doesn't uh impedes you makes it stronger right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so having all that what kind of high school did you go to it's different high school system in iceland than in the u.s what was your kind yeah. of so i got, went to high school with i don't know like why i chose it i didn't want to go to school like right next to my home mm-hmm. so i didn't want i so i went to a high school i don't know how to like it's different but i did a major in biology it was like two okay. majors there's sociology and biology but i chose biology mm-hmm. and I, f- I feel like all the high school in iceland are kind of similar mm-hmm. if you want to go on like uh sciences no yeah so do you have uh so in croatia we have law high school do we have history? we have language high school technical high school the economy high school is that similar in iceland do you have so, that? yeah we have like similar like that we have like a driver uh, high school. We have a driver high school. Yeah. In oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> we have, we have, there's some high school that are for specific, specific fields, but I had no idea what I want to do. So I chose like kind of like a broad. Yeah, I so I had like my options open still mm-hmm. and still not right next to my home. So I would like get new friends and all that. So, <laughs> yeah. So when you say ne- not next to your home, how far was it? It was five minute drive. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was in another neighborhood. <laughs> well, your parents like, bye, come back. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, that tells you a little bit about how big I, well, Iceland is big. I mean, it's big, yeah. yeah. But there's not a lot of parts of Iceland that you can live in. So like the city, it's most just like, 10 50 minutes along is if that yeah. you have to drive usually did you drive high school did you take a bus how was it i, I took the bus okay and that was so that took <laughs> fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no it just puts you in perspective right in uh, america yeah. the sizes you know people commute to work for an hour that's normal in the u.s right i know in croatia same thing if i had to go to other part of the city which was 11 minute bus drive i'll be like oh my god i have to plan my day around right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's like seven bus stops oh my god right? <laughs> and here on the campus you walk back and forth oh yeah. <laughs> yeah 
How different is so I gotta ask you about this. This is one of the questions to to go. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about Iceland. The movie with Will Ferrell. Uh, ever, ever oh my vision? your vision? <laughs> <laughs> your vision? How true that movie is. I mean, portrays oh the Icelandic God. people. Uh, so I love Did they the hit movie. some things correctly or they were completely off. There was a lot of things like like they're talking about elves a lot. Like okay. we praise the um, I mean some people actually do believe in elves. Mm -hmm. I really don't feel I mean no I don't believe in them you're not believers and, <laughs> well, not believers not really but we there are some parts of ice and there's like a small elf house that people put up that they say the elves live there okay so that part also, that's true that's a true I mean that's that, true that is story. actually true oh, yeah yeah that is actually true wow. like that that was in the movie there too is. and then they brought like food and all that to the <laughs> elves okay. but in the movie Apparently, one of the elves stabbed him in the back and stuff like that's obviously made up. I okay, mean, <laughs> obviously, yeah. But the people, but people do believe in some, I guess. Some people actually believe it's in a that. legend. Okay, right. Yes, when like in the history mm. where they believed the elves lived, they would not like. <laughs> so, like, if they're making a road and some elves live here, they had mm. to like go around it with the road they would not go over it oh they would they not would build like, the road in that area no they That's would sure. not like ruin anything so they had to actually oh. just like go around it if they're building a like road a sacred or they would sound. Not... like it's a sacred yes. land sacred land yeah, yeah. Sacred. it's supposed to, it, like if you would like ruin their home it something bad will happen to you oh. they believe that so yeah. they obviously wouldn't build a road if there would something bad happen yeah. maybe a car crash or uh. something so that that was true okay and they were also in the movie talking about that everybody's related <laughs> that it's like oh it's your brother probably not because they don't know probably not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three hundred thousand people right about three hundred thousand yes. yeah mm -hmm. so obviously that's a, there's a lot of people related but so that's yeah, kind of like, true. Like, me, it is kind of true. Like I don't really know if they're related, but probably not. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know your closest. <laughs> you you got to know who you got to know. I mean, this is yeah, exactly. This is your family. <laughs> you go to another yeah. village, which is seven minutes away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we also have an app that can you can put your name. You can see wh which one is related to you. But I don't have the mm -hmm. app. But apparently there is an app, so you can actually check. Okay. So like you don't like. Yeah, you don't want to start a family with your closely related one, so you have to like check up on that. But that yeah. that is kind of true. Like we kind of know like the closest one to us, but you they always that. said in the movie. you were you were trying to make yourself so safe. You went to America to find a boyfriend. Like this is there's no <laughs> way, uh, there's no way you're related to me. There's I don't no think so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. <laughs> there's no mistake. <laughs> Okay, I heard about the app. I heard about the app. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what else in the movie that is similar to Iceland? Um, who had a better accent in the movie? She oh. or him? <laughs> I feel like neither of them. I actually had... She, they were trying to say some things that yeah. I really didn't understand. I had to, like, go into subtitles and see what they're saying. Yeah. But... Some of it, some of it said in Iceland. I was like, okay, cool. They're like, they're like trying to say right. something, yeah. but it was very hard for like me to understand them speaking, trying to speak Icelandic. What was the name of that town up north? What's the name of it? Husavik. 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 That's a real town, yes. I assume. Yeah, that that's a real town. It's like a super small town. Okay. That, yeah, I've been uh, like I've been there a lot, and yeah, there's not really much to do there. Okay. But <laughs> Yeah. It's, it looks beautiful it looks beautiful i mean whole yeah. Iceland from that movie and uh, i i had a i was fortunate enough to visit years ago it's really mm -hmm. really beautiful and you, yeah you know, it is. your country is incredible geysirs and uh oh yeah the ocean is beautiful sunsets oh my god the, the long long sunsets in the summer mm -hmm. uh, really really pretty so yes the iceland we talk about how cold it is but iceland is really a true yeah uh, gem of the world beautiful food is also really good i like the food yeah um and uh do you like hilmar hilmar i know he liked uh farm the shark do you have that for breakfast too or no i really hate it it's i feel like the older people like it like 
I'm not saying Hilmar's older, but <laughs> well, he is a father. <laughs> he, he is so older he though. Is, yeah. But but most people that grew up on it, like mm-hmm. eating it when they were younger, they like it more. But I never had it. It was more just like I dare you to eat it. Like I'll <laughs> like give you this much money to eat because it was it's very bad. It smells disgusting yeah. too. Yeah. And it's I really don't like it. So very it's few not people actually Icelandic like it. Icelandic people eat. It's not okay. No. I know my grandpa likes it, but my mom doesn't like it. My brother doesn't like it. I don't like it. So most people don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> uh, no shark for you. No shark for you. No shark for me. No, not at all. <laughs> well, it's, again, a beautiful country. Definitely worth visit. Amazing food, amazing people. You are all very friendly in your English. People in Iceland speak really good English. So when do you when do yeah. you start learning English in, uh, in high school or from? No, it was elementary school? school. It was um, I don't remember. It was like very early in elementary school. Yeah. They very very em- em- emphasized like to learn English because yeah. there's only three hundred thousand people that speak Icelandic, and that's not really gonna help you a lot. So you have it's to not like, like you're gonna walk in the, uh, somewhere in Germany like oh wait if you oh yeah English, <laughs> no like, German or English. Yeah, exactly. So like they emphasize a lot to us for us to learn English and we learn Danish too and German. Okay. So it's like language is very big for us that we have to learn. So that's that really helped us though, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. No, you you right. nailed the TOEFL tests. And for those who don't know, when uh, we have students Oof. from international students, yeah. they come from not the non native speakers. Uh, so pretty much any student that is not from US or from England or Australia and New Zealand where the English is first language, they have to take, students have to take TOEFL test and mm-hmm. Hilma nailed it. Uh, you and Hilmar, you nailed it. Uh, so <laughs> That's like, a oh, very wow. hard test though. Yeah. That's you a very, really like, well. very nervous, nerve wracking too. You have to like be able to write an essay. You, you have to like answer question while speaking hmm. and you have to listen. It's, it's very hard, but definitely worth it too be able to come to america Helps, yeah 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 oh uh, so coming to america <laughs> oh. uh, why why when did you decide that uh you might be looking into studying in the u.s and then obviously why uva but yeah how did you come yeah. to idea to study in america um so first when i was in high school i wasn't really looking to go and into college especially in america because i thought like while when I was in high school, I was always had the lowest grade in English. Like English was very hard for me. Mm. I I was always had the lowest grade, so I was like, okay, no, like why would I go to America and especially study there? Like I had no faith in me. Like I couldn't do it. But then I started to get better in discourse. I was like, okay, I might be able to get a scholarship and come to America. And um, oh, I think it was mostly because Hilma was there. And I thought it would be easier for me to go if I knew someone who speaks Icelandic and would help me, as, at least in the beginning of the school, to like get me in and all that. And um, then I started thinking a little bit, okay, I might be might come. And then I have to take the TOEFL test, take the SATs. See, yep. And the SATs was also super hard. I had to like study for that by myself. I had no tutor or anything. Apparently, people here in America have tutors to do oh, they that. Start, but... They start early, yes. Yep. Yeah, they start early, but I had just a few months before to like go over everything. Yeah. But yeah, I tried my hardest, did all that, and then I, I, I always saw in the movies how how college would be cool. I, it, I so I decided like, why not try it? Like worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I'll be able to come home. I tried it at least. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm I saw you when I was competing at e in poland it was i don't remember it was world championship or european championship i don't remember which one i can't remember but i saw yeah yeah, i saw you and coach fetcher Mm -hmm. and you and then i talked to you and i was like okay yeah i might be able to come and visit so i got i went came to visit and i actually loved it a lot i thought i felt like home right away so that's why i decided to come to uva yeah, well, and we are very fortunate that you did. Yeah. Uh, I remember yeah, recruiting you. And I knew you were going to be great. You know, you're already very good. You're already a very good thrower. And uh, obviously one of the best that we had at UVA, all-time list. 
uh, ACC, you rocked it, right? Both both times that you competed. Uh, and I remember your first, the trip here. Uh, I remember your came. I'm like, I just hope it's not snowing. I just hope it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so if she comes here and she'll, because it rarely snows, rarely snows yeah. at UVA, but it does. When Jacob came for his unofficial, it was one day a year that it snows. Jacob was there. And then oh my you God. came uh, as well, right? But um, I'm like, just don't snow. Like, this is, yeah. it, was, it was good. It was nice weather, right? Yeah, it was amazing weather. I got sunburned and all that, so I got the full experience. So it was <laughs> good. In November or October. What, yeah. what was, uh, somewhere there. November, it was, November. I think it was in October, okay. like middle of October, but it was still very hot outside. Yeah. Did we go <laughs> to, did, did we send you to a football game? Did we take you to a football game? Or? Yes. I, I went to a football game and I went to um, tailgating first, which I tried Chick fil A nuggets for the first time. I actually loved it. I was like, what is that? Why does it taste so good? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, yeah, we went to the football game and I absolutely had no idea what was going on. But yeah. Yeah. everybody was screaming. So I was like, oh, it's cool. It's cool. And then I always, I think I was, yeah, exactly. I think I was at Jade and I, I always asked her, just like, like, yeah. And I always ask her what's going on. Like, what, why, why did, why did, did, it, did that happen? Yeah, why yeah. did this? She was like trying to like explain to me the football, but I had no idea what's going on, but I still loved it because everybody yeah. was just screaming and, yeah. and we won the game. So that was even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, uh, have you been to a game that was with so many people before? Did you go to any other, um, cause that's, I mean, basically half of Iceland of population. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, not, maybe one six. All right, about 50, yeah. 60,000 um, people can fit in uh, Scott Stadium. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was the I'll... first time, it was like a big game. So, yeah. it was amazing. Good. Well, <laughs> we're happy that you had a good visit, obviously. Yeah. Um, and now you came to US to study. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you, when you, when you started studying, that you found difficult that you uh, wish you prepared better for? Uh, going back now, what would be advice to your young self uh, to be prepared for? Um, the most difficult part of like school when I came over was the language barrier. Because mm. I, I went to class and I just like stared at the professor talking and I just saw that like I couldn't comprehend any words that they said because they talked so fast. Yeah. And I feel, felt like I just need to subtitle something for, with them. Because I just had no idea and I was trying to do notes, but I didn't understand what they're saying. So like, I didn't even understand the words that I was trying to write, but it was hard for me to like um, prepare, prepare yeah. something for that because coming from Iceland and then going over. But that definitely just, I got better, better like every day and like with the years, like now it's way easier than the first year. Mm. And also the, I remember I, I had to take a sociology class, which was mostly just reading and writing it was i'm actually not good at a little, so yeah, to, to, as a first year to uh, read so much in english that's yeah it was like 80 pages for each class that i had to read and i was like oh okay and yeah. then writing all that so that was pretty hard yeah. but something to prepare like tell my younger self that it's gonna be okay. Like it will work out in the end. Oh, just yeah. keep trying. Just yeah. yeah, don't give up. Even though you get a bad grade, that yeah. like that happened to me a lot. But you could always talk to a professor, tell them you you have a language barrier and that that's gonna be difficult for you to understand. And they will definitely help you. Maybe give you extra time on the mm -hmm. on the test and and all that. Also, mm -hmm. the writing center at UVA helped me a lot. I went there with my essays, and they had to like correct a lot of things but that helped me a lot and also my first year I had uh, tutoring which actually wasn't that helpful mm. but I, I was able to ask questions okay. but yeah that was also helpful too okay. and just trying to be on, up to date with my homework and all that even though it's very hard but just do as much as you can no oh, I love it uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean it's it's a cliche and it can be funny but it really is a good advice right don't like you'll be fine you'll be fine right because yeah when you i remember my first couple months um same thing right everything is in english i'm staying at a professor i'm staying at my teammates and when they talk to me i can understand when they talk to me slowly but like you say if they start talking like we're talking right now 
mm-hmm. I'm like in my head I'm in Croatian I'm talking to Croatian yeah. like, why did I come here like I will not yeah. make <laughs> what it. am I doing here <laughs> yeah so that cultural shock is real first couple months yeah. I felt that um it's, it's different for everybody but I remember saying calling my parents like yeah I might come back soon we'll see like I'll give yeah. it <laughs> I'm be, I don't think I can do this this is insane. yeah like uh <laughs> yeah everything I, I always, yeah I also had like a notebook that I translated all the world words Mm-hmm. But then I just got too many words that I was like, I can't even keep up to this. I'm just trans- translating every word that I'm reading. Yep. So that's going to take a while. But <laughs> how long, uh, how long before uh, you were like, heck with it, I'm just going to go along with it. Like, I'm not going to translate as many things. Like, I'm just going to try to say whatever it is without being correct. What was the time period that you were comfortable uh, of? Like, okay, I can make this. Like, I can see myself making it. How long um, so like my first semester was actually terrible. I was just, I, I'm just going to give up. Like, this is too much. Like, I don't, why am I doing this? Yeah. Um, the second, my second semester <clears throat> got a little bit better, but I feel like when I moved finally out of my dorm and went, got my own place and that was beginning of my second year. And I was like, okay, like I survived the first year. Cause I feel like a lot of people, if they don't survive the first year, they will drop out. So I survived the first year and it got way better after my, like after the first year. So the second year, it got way better. Just to note to listeners, Telma is one of our best students, so uh, academic honor roll, ACC honor, academic honor roll, right? So, <laughs> uh, just so they know that you're doing really well in school, right? So yeah. getting those bad grades in the beginning, uh, you persevered and you definitely made it, right? And you're still, you're doing mm-hmm. incredibly, right? So that just so they know, they're like, oh my god, is yeah, she going, is she going to graduate? Sure. Like, no, tell me, doing really well. She's doing really well. Hilmar too. I got to know that he's yeah. also one of our uh, best students, uh, athletes as well as obviously an athlete. Uh, but yeah, he he had a little uh, he has a little different story starting in when I interview him. Maybe he's going to share with us. Yeah. But as every international student, that first first semester, first year, uh, different for the, everybody. But man, it can be it can be rough. Mm-hmm. It's it's very it's can be very rough, especially like in the beginning you get a bad grade you're like oh my gosh I already failed the class like yeah. I could just stop now like I already failed but there's you can always do something to get your grade up and yeah. you'll 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 be fine. <laughs> so now that you're doing more than fine, what is some um, what's your day like at UVA? Uh, how does it work? The practice, um, school, uh, describe for us a day. And tell my Lynn's life. Okay, so let's say it's Monday. Yeah, I I wake up and I have a like a small black breakfast usually, and then I go to practice throwing. Either it's either around eight or nine that I throw, and I throw for about an hour, a little bit maybe over that, and then after that, um. I either it depends when the class is. I either go home take a shower or I have to go straight to class, and then I have about two classes a day. So I it's usually back to back, or I have some period in between to get to be no, to do some homework, and then after that I have to go. I get something to eat, and then I go to lift for an hour, uh, around five yeah from five to six. We lift, and after that, I go home, um, get some dinner. Now, I usually go to JPD to get dinner at dining hall, then go home, eat the dinner, and then shower, do some homework, and then it's already time to go to sleep. So, and then just again and again and again, the same thing. Yeah, man, you get better and better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, are, uh, what are some, where did you stay uh, your dorm first year? It's called Woody. You stayed in Woody, okay. Uh, Woody, yeah, it was the, it was the old, no, it was the oldest of the newest dorms. Okay, oldest of the newest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oldest of the newest. So it was not the newest, but not the oldest. So it was like in the middle. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah. some that we had. There's some other at least stayed in the middle of grounds. Uh, I forgot oh, the name yeah. of the Eva stayed. That was oldest of the oldest, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oldest <laughs> of the oldest is the is the lawn. Uh, oh yeah where Eva stayed that's pretty old as well um and yeah there everything was like okay 
over there. What was your um, route? How did you, you didn't have a car your first year. How did you get to class and to practice and all that? So there's a, my first year, there was a, there's like a very good bus system. So that it stopped right next to my dorm that I could take straight to practice. And then I took the bus from practice to class. And then from class, there's like a very good bus system that takes you right where you want to be. So I just took the bus, whatever. And then I took the bus from practice to home. And the dining hall was right next to my dorm. So that was very nice. So it was just like three minute walk to get food. And there was unlimited swiping every day. So I didn't know that at first. And I was starving because I thought it was just once a day. Oh, no. And then when, really? Yeah. I, know <laughs> I, I, I had no idea how it worked. And then when I found out, like, no, you can go whenever you want. I was like, oh, OK. I was like, just eat once a day. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to survive just eating <laughs> one. But <laughs> like, this is not America that I heard about. No. <laughs> but then, then it got way better when you. How long did you not know, know that? Huh? How long did you not know that? It was at least my first week, okay. maybe first two weeks. It wasn't that long. It was like before the, the practice started. So I didn't really know. I didn't talk to the team. I said, you come in January? I, Is that... No, you I came, came in, in August. August. Yeah. Oh, came okay. in August. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know anything how anything worked when I came there. I was so yeah. lost in everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I remember yeah. when my, me and my mom just arrived to the dorm. I brought two suitcases and I saw all the other people moving in with their parents with like the mini fridges, the microwaves. Yeah. I was like, wait, do we need that? And I just came into my dorm with two suitcases and my mom was like, let's go to the store. We have to buy so many things. So, yeah, I wasn't prepared for anything, but it was okay. Yeah. We, it worked out. <laughs> well, it's, it's a culture, right? You don't know yeah. um, the ways around, around it, right? Um, and mm -hmm. your, on your visit, <clears throat> I can't believe we skipped that part, by the way, but you can have <laughs> unlimited uh, meals. But that's something <laughs> to make a note. I'll make sure all the foreigners know that you can eat yeah. definitely one, more than once a day. <laughs> once a day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for the record out there, yeah, guys, we do uh, have <laughs> unlimited. Food yeah, I have a lot of food. <laughs> well, when it comes to food, so what are uh, some things that you like in America? Obviously, Chick Fil A was one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are some good foods that you uh, didn't have at home, and you were like, "Wow, this is awesome." So there's there's so much to choose from here. I feel like that's just crazy. The one thing I love here is, oof, I don't, even, I can't even think of one thing. But I feel like there's a so much fried food that I don't like. I feel like almost everything is fried. But oh, what I like, I couldn't say one thing. But there's, there's a lot of good. Food. Like there's always some good choice. I feel like you got. We got sushi and yeah. uh, Indian food, Mexican food in Iceland. You got you got mm -hmm. a couple of restaurants, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have all 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 kinds yeah. of food back home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are some things that you miss from home in America? Um, oh, definitely my family. Yeah. Like that's that's definitely my number one, and the food back home that I just grew up with, all the candies and all that. Yes, chocolate. Oh my god, Icelandic chocolate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have like a lot of different chocolate and licorice and all that I just grew up on mm -hmm. that are, are not here, or at least not yeah. the same thing. So that's definitely that I miss. And just like the basic stuff that I used to eat when I was younger that they don't have here. Yeah. What's the so, what's yeah. Icelandic breakfast? What do you gotta do for breakfast over there? Hmm. That is very different. Like I used to just eat oatmeal because I was always in a hurry. Okay. But always on the weekends we have bakery back in Iceland where it's like very huge thing bakery. So on the weekends we used to go to bakery, buy bread and pastries and all that, which yeah. I love. And we yeah we we were very big on bakeries and I've tried bakeries here. That's not the same yeah. thing. It's yeah. So that's bread, probably bread yeah. is different the way it makes it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, definitely some of the things that I miss back home. Yeah, the bake fresh bread in Croatia, it cannot last two days. Like it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you buy bread here, it lasts for two weeks or something. Yeah. But back home, it's like three, four days, and then you have yeah. to throw it away because it's yeah. gonna be too bad. Yep. Yeah, there's gonna be all fungus on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, same, same here. Um, so we got a couple more questions. I don't want to take too much of your time. No, it's okay. Uh, I have time. <laughs> So one of the questions is, what's your pre-meat routine? Do you have any? So I have like, a, yeah, I have some. I wake up at least around like five hours before I compete for five hours. It depends what like what time yeah. the competition is. I eat a good breakfast with all like carbs, protein and fat. So usually oatmeal with protein powder in it and peanut butter. It's like, yeah, it's a kind of stable thing that I usually eat. And I eat that at least three hours before I compete because I don't want to be too full or yeah. before I compete. Okay, yeah. And then yeah. and then I just take a shower, get ready, usually do my hair to like, yeah. And then, then I go to the track around hour and a half before I compete usually. Hour to two hour depends. And I usually get some treatment from my hip or whatever if, if something is hurting. And then I warm up around an hour before, get a good warm up. And if I'm hungry before, I can get like a light snack, like I have a banana or something. And yeah, then I just compete. After that, yeah. And you and you throw a fly. Yeah. <laughs> and I throw a fly. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty basic uh, routine. Yeah. That's it's good to have something simple, but have some kind of routine so you don't have to. If if, if you have three thousand things on your list and one is off, like oh my god, I'm not gonna compete well today, right? Because one of the things that I, I couldn't yeah. have done today. So it's good to have a routine, but it's also good to make it simple. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so and also throwing uh, any sport when you do it long enough very likely there's going to come some injuries right so how do you yes. deal with setbacks with injuries you had few what is what is your process through it so uh yeah i've gotten a lot of injuries but when that happened i probably just take a little step back and take it a little bit easier like i i have an injury in my hip that has been bothering me and when when it gets worse then I go to treatment, go to trainers, get get treatment, and they usually do some mobility stuff, and then I get do this small exercise exercise around the like all the muscles around where I'm injured. Mm -hmm. So, and then like my hip, I uh, skip doing squats. At least like if something hurts, I don't do it for a while, yeah. <laughs> make it a little bit better. And then it usually gets better after a while. And then I start slowly getting back into it, like squats and all that. And But now, like, if it hurts again, I'll just take a step back again and then just try to build, build smart, me up. Be smart it. about it, yeah. Yeah, definitely be smart about it. Not push you too hard that it gets worse. Emotionally, I mean, it can be really hard too, right? Yes. Um, what do you, how do you deal with that? Because uh, it's hard as an athlete, you're like, oh, I work so hard. Yeah. I have to take a break. So, probably right when it happens, I take maybe like 10, 15 minutes that I'm just very angry. Just, uh -huh. I hate everything. But then you just, okay, gotta calm yourself. Like, okay, it'll be okay. Just be smart about it. Like, just do what you can't do. Don't like, go, like, don't do too much or anything. And yeah, I think. The mind is very hard to control when when it comes to injuries. Well, it's it's a part of almost every athlete. I yeah. I don't know a good athlete that didn't have injuries, right? But when you push your body, it's going to come to that point that you will push a little bit too much. And it could be just something walking down the street and uh, rolling an ankle. Um, mm -hmm. Normal people get injured too. I would say more than athletes. Athletes at least warm up, but they they. Uh, you'll have a lot of surgery, meniscal surgeries for non-athletes, right? Just people living their lives. Uh, mm -hmm. But as an athlete, that's your kind of livelihood. So emotionally, it can be a big strain. But yeah, taking that moment and, and thinking about it strategically, letting doctors do their thing, 
very important, right? Mm -hmm. um, what if you can do any other sport? What sport would you choose and why? I would probably choose CrossFit. Okay. Cro yeah. Why? Because yeah. Um, I used to do CrossFit when I was younger too, when I was in track. So I went to CrossFit at 6 a.m. And then I went to school. And then I went to track practice at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like I did both because I, I didn't want to choose at first and I had to choose. Yeah. But I feel like I would do CrossFit because that's such a variety of like all you can you would do everything. Mm -hmm. And I like pushing myself until I almost just die, I just lay on the ground and can't move, which is kind of like CrossFit is. <laughs> yeah. And also like my family, at least my brother is big into CrossFit and all that. So it would be cooler to do CrossFit. He's a CrossFit coach in, yeah. in Switzerland and his girlfriend is an elite CrossFit athlete. She's like top in the world mm. in CrossFit. So definitely CrossFit. How long that does your brother or, or his girlfriend, how long when he was competing was his practice? What was his practice routine? Oh, his. Um, CrossFit takes a while because there's like so much you have to do. And it's usually around like two and a half hours, maybe that he does. Because at first he has to, has to do like some strength. Maybe he does back squat, focus on back squat, like five times five or like works up to heavy weight. And then after that, he has to do a lot. What was like work of the day that could maybe take up to 40 minutes and do that. And then he has to stretch and then between everything, he like takes a long break and all that. It's not like go, 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 go always. Like yeah. when the strength just maybe does a squat and then like waits for five minutes and then does again. Yeah. So it, it takes a while. Yeah. It's a whole, whole day. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it is. And, um, yeah, it's impressive. I did CrossFit one time. Uh, I really <laughs> did. They went to the CrossFit gym. Uh, it was one of our coworkers that pushed me and my another co-worker uh and like oh you guys would love it right so me and my buddy like, okay let's go we can do 20 minutes what's 20 minutes i have never been that sore in my life for so long and it was simple it was some med ball throws some push-ups some uh some ropes it was just maybe five six exercises and i'm like okay i could do a first round and then second round and then it was like six or seven <laughs> i don't want to i'm going to be a wuss but i'm dying over here i'm like no i'm good i'm good and man, I couldn't walk. And there was nothing heavy that we did. And like, oh, I, I can squat, you know, 250 yeah. kilos. What is, you know, a couple of, a couple of sit-ups. Man, it gets you. Uh, that soreness. That, it was stupid that we did that. <laughs> that hard. And she warned us. Like, no, you got to ease into it. Like, I'm a, nah, that's I'm easy. a discus thrower. Come on. I'm yeah. a lead discus thrower. We're trying to be one. And man, I was humbled. I was humbled. Yeah. And I remember uh, when we were doing... 20 minutes of heaven uh oh god your brother visited and <laughs> you were running through maybe 10 minutes or so and i was like oh tell me don't worry like you know this you, you can stop at any time and your brother was like she's not gonna stop there's no <laughs> she's not stopping like, don't worry coach like you have to carry her out and you went back and forth back and forth back and forth uh, you did all 20 minutes and i was like wow because uh, doing 20 minutes of heaven is it's hard uh, mm -hmm. For all you there, it's our secret practice that we post yeah. on our social media for everybody to see. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember that when your brother was here, like, nah, she's not gonna stop. No, <laughs> no if, not, if I start, like, I'm not gonna stop. I, I have to finish it. I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> Even though I'm dying, I'll just finish it still. Yeah, and that's what I love about you guys, your group. You guys are really hard workers. Tell me, you're an incredible thrower. Uh, you did a lot of great things at UVA. I'm very grateful. Uh, to be a coach i'm very lucky and blessed uh, and i'm looking forward to this season what well, to this yes. is gonna be incredible yeah. um so what is next for you after this season you're gonna be a senior you're gonna graduate and um, then you have another year uh do you have any plans uh or there's nothing set right now but i'm thinking about grad school that would be cool because mm. i have this one extra year of eligibility for discus so it would be cool to use that but there's nothing decided right now exactly what I'm going to do. So we'll see. Be determined. To be determined. Yeah, right? to be determined. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So one more question, Tama. I ask this uh, to everybody. 
what will be your advice, some advice that you give somebody coming in to college, international students? All right, so I ask this question to everybody and your international students now. So from your perspective, what will be some things that you were you would give advice to students in high school now, how to prepare or what to expect to come when they come to US? Okay, so definitely be patient, like I said earlier, because yeah. like in the beginning, it's gonna be overwhelming and everything. You're gonna be lost because you don't know what you're doing. You, you just gotta accept it and go go for it and um, play along play along yeah play along with it just just act like you know what you're doing even though you have no idea and definitely just give it time <laughs> definitely just That's give so it true. time That's so true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give it time like don't give up right away even though, like the first year it's gonna be very hard especially like missing home and like moving from your parents and you like just have to facetime them and you can't really talk to anyone in your in your language except just call call back home. So that's definitely different. And usually after like a whole day, your mind just is so just so yeah. confused because you're you're trying to talk English the whole time the whole day, and then you sometimes have no idea what you're saying anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. And definitely just start, uh, be organized from the start. Just take it one day by day. Don't try like do everything at in one day, and yeah, give it time. Be patient, and just be confident in what you're doing, and just know that everything be will be okay. Like, yeah. if you fail a test, it's fine. Like, just yeah. do better next time. Like, nothing's gonna happen. It's yeah. gonna be fine. No, that that's great. Yeah, if you fail. Uh, you can still be like Telma and finish up really, really good uh, with, with high grades. Telma, thank you so much. Again, like I said, you've been an incredible benefit to our team. Uh, you're an ma- amazing teammate. You're very supportive. Uh, you get the girls going in the way through. You're <laughs> definitely set up some high standards out there. Uh, and I love to see you guys compete and train together. You're, you're a great team. You're a great team. And I'm jealous. And I keep saying this. I'm jealous I'm not on the team of throwers that we have now that I didn't have that when I was in college, right? Yeah. Um, quote, unquote, jealous, right? I'm mean, happy to see you yeah. guys uh, <laughs> enjoy. And you guys all want to throw far. And you're supportive. You're great students. Uh, so I'm excited for you for this uh, at least one more year. And then Yeah, at least one more year. Yeah, uh, I'm excited for you to uh, be healthy and throw far. You did really well last year, 53-60 mm-hmm. at ACCs. You did really well, uh, and hopefully we'll break 55 plus this next year we and get to, to another Icelandic to. record. Right? We have to do that. That's that's a minimum. <laughs> minimum. A minimum. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Thomas, so much. I will see you in in. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, actually. Right? See you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. See you, Thomas. See you. See you.